UNL Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zims joined us earlier this week in Columbus to look at potential problems in the state's cornfields. Tamara says growers can be sampling their fields for nematodes and watching for gosses wilt in areas where storms may have damaged plants. Tamara says while seedling diseases have been minimal so far, large amounts of rain in pockets of Nebraska could provide an opening. You know, we've had a lot of wet weather and certainly ponding in fields is going to be conducive for certain seedling diseases like Pythium. And just because we've gotten warm doesn't mean we're necessarily completely out of the woods yet. But with that said, no, we have not seen widespread seedling diseases like we expected this year. Are there certain pathogens that do like the warmer weather? Absolutely. We've got things like Rhizoctonia and Fusarium and all kinds of pathogens that will take advantage of this type of weather. So we should still keep on the lookout, but we're probably getting out of that time period. In addition to some of the multiple inches of rain that parts of Nebraska have seen, there have also been issues with some damage from storms. In those areas are things like gosses wilt more of a concern. That's a good point because most people do not always think about gosses wilt starting early in the season, but it really can be a, a big problem early in the season too particularly so in fields that have sustained some damage from hail or high winds. And so if you had corn that had already emerged prior to some of those storm events, that would be something I'd certainly want to watch for. If Goss's wilt develops and it develops early in the season like we are now, it can uh, lead to some systemic disease and some of our bigger gosses wilt losses. A lot of times we talk about this maybe in July and we look on bigger plants and bigger leaves, but can you give us a refresher of what you should be looking for in those fields? Normally for gosses wilt, we look for the dark green to black freckles on the edges of water soaked lesions. You might also notice that the surface of the leaves might look glossy uh, when you look at them under the sunlight. Uh, that can show up early in the season. It's more common though to see a systemic wilt this early and when that happens the entire plant can just melt down in a matter of a day or two. And so when you cut that open you'll see some discoloration inside. You mentioned that it can be, Goss's wilt can be really damaging at this point. How damaging could it be? Well particularly when we have Goss's wilt develop early in the, in the season at a seedling stage, Goss's wilt will actually often kill the plants before they ever get to a reproductive stage. And so we often have dead plants or carcasses in the field and then secondary problems like weed pressure and other things develop thereafter in a severe situation. Not as common though. Is it too early to start sampling for nematodes in cornfields? No way, actually. This is probably the best time for people to be thinking about sampling for nematodes of corn, especially if you have sandy fields. In particular, the nematodes that can survive and feed on corn in sandy fields are going to be ones that can travel deep in the soil. So this is the best time to catch them when our roots are still shallow. And so we recommend sampling uh, corn by the time they are at the five leaf stage or V5. If uh, you want to look for nematodes of corn, especially in sandy fields. Otherwise, in our other soil types, you could even wait till the end of the season after harvest. To make sure you get uh, the best results possible, if you send a plant into the lab first, we'll talk about sampling after, but if you send a plant into the lab first, what do you want that sample to be like? We want that sample to be as alive and crisp as possible. And so make sure you take good care of it. Treat it like you would the produce that you purchase at the grocery store. Bag it in plastic. Keep it cool if possible. Uh, don't allow it to uh, get too hot. Ship it early in the week too so it doesn't sit over the weekend. And if you're sampling for nematodes? Especially uh, some of the same recommendations. We want the freshest sample possible because we need the nematodes alive. And so uh, handle those samples gently, keep them in plastic, keep them cool when possible, and always sample from within the root zone. And this time of year, you can also collect whole plants and send in those whole plants in a separate bag. And we can collect nematodes from both the plant and the soil itself. For more information on Goss's wilt, sampling for nematodes, and other corn disease problems you may experience throughout the growing year, you can visit marketjournal.unl.edu slash corn diseases. There you can view a series of videos featuring Tamara explaining corn disease issues in Nebraska. As we mentioned earlier, we have information on sending samples to UNL's plant and pest diagnostic clinic available on our website.